Children as young as eight years old are being held and tortured across a network of secret Islamist prisons in Syria, according to shocking new reports. The jails are operated by one of the fiercest rebel groups, the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant. Its practices and laws are so harsh that Amnesty International has equated it to a reign of terror. Smoking or behavior deemed anti-Islamic can lead to lengthy sentences at these detention centers and even worse. But as Ansiz Gaina and Chachakan reports, Washington's commitment to the rebels in Syria means it's willing to talk to even the most hardline groups. Washington says it's willing to negotiate with the so-called Islamic Front in Syria just days after the front kicked the Western-backed Supreme Military Council out of their headquarters and seized their warehouses. We do engage, we can engage with the Islamic Front, of course, because they're not designated. Here. And do you have any... Yet, the Islamic Front includes groups that are demanding a hardline Sharia state. It would be a strategic mistake if the U.S. administration or Europe or their allies would be engaging in a partnership. And a partnership meaning they will be collaborating with organizations that are jihadist and have not committed to become moderates or recognize the fact that if they come to power or part of power, they will recognize the human rights. That did not happen. While Washington is reevaluating whom to support in the fight against Assad, al-Qaeda-linked groups have made significant gains in the north of Syria, where they've pushed out other rebel forces. In the name of Allah, the gracious and merciful. When you're firing rockets, it's Allah who fires them with your hands. These strikes are only a drop in the ocean. The lions of the Islamic State are fulfilling their oath from Iraq to Lebanon. These Islamist forces are better trained and better armed. Some of them got their training fighting against the U.S. in Afghanistan in the 1980s, when the U.S. was arming the anti-Soviet Mujahideen. In those days, some got their experience and their arms fighting against the U.S. in Iraq much more recently. Washington says the Islamic Front that it is willing to negotiate with does not include designated terrorist groups like Jabhat al-Nusra and the so-called Islamic State of Iraq and Levant. But on the ground in Syria, there are so many different groups that the labels could be irrelevant. Residents of the town of Adra near Damascus can't name the exact rebel group that executed over 80 civilians there, including children, earlier this week. The U.S. has supported the Syrian opposition on a premise that Washington would be able to discern different shades of extremists there and figure out which ones are less extreme. But even the report that there was no battle over the warehouses between the Islamic Front and the Western-backed Supreme Military Council is one indicator of how blurred those lines are and how flawed is the assumption that one can distinguish with certainty between those groups. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chekhan, our team. So where are all these radicals coming from? The answer is from almost everywhere. Even the most secular European states have identified their citizens fighting in Syria, often on behalf of radical rebels. And that's really started to worry EU officials who know that those Islamists will come back home one day. Artis Peter Oliver looks at the concerns. The number of Europeans heading to Syria to fight in the country's ongoing civil war is currently topping the EU counter-terrorism agenda. Speaking at a meeting of security officials in Brussels, the Belgian interior minister said as many as 2,000 EU citizens may be involved in the conflict. His French counterpart saying... Well, those numbers were on the increase. That statement reiterates findings by the International Centre for the Study of Radicalisation. They're a group based out of King's College in London. Now, they suggest that since April of this year, the number of Europeans going to Syria to fight may have increased threefold. Now, their other findings suggest that up to 11,000 foreigners from as many as 70 different countries may have taken part in the conflict at some point. 18% of those coming from Western Europe 